Now in the series, we're chatting with various artists in Kukala's community, and it's art of all forms. We're speaking with Eddie Chambers. Pisces, you're the dragon. It's not new, and it's not any black. It's about respect, y'all. Outdimensional sounds here in Maratonga Cook Island, beyond the roof. My name is Eddie, Eddie Chambers, uh, but my, uh, for the most part, I, I DJ, I guess. Uh, I have a radio show called Beyond the Reef. And in that guys, um, I'm Eddie Licious. And uh, yeah, we play beats there every Wednesday night here in Rarotonga. And uh, with a crew of uh, other dedicated DJs and uh, island producers showing up from time to time. Well, I got back to Raro in 2006, so it would be, I guess the show started like maybe the end of 2006. That's when I found the right person, Damon Inoka, to um, give me the key to the studio to set up and, and play the show, which was great. Well, as they say, what happens at the radio show stays at the radio show. But um, briefly, we all get together and um, the focus is really on um, not top 40, but more Kind of, I like to think of it as uh, like sounds from the future, but played today. Sort of like what we think is um, amazing that's em emerging or coming up that's like new. So that's one focus. And the other focus is to kind of like back catalogue on all the things that zillions of people in, in Rarotonga, but also in most other places of the world, have kind of missed out on uh, other musics that have been released over time because most radio stations are corporate events and everything's so contrived and um, organised that nobody, uh, you know, bands that probably do deserve to be heard, they never are because they're not signed to the right company or maybe uh, the music's slightly um, hard to handle and so they kind of get thrown down the cracks, so to speak. So. Our job at Beyond the Reef is to make sure that those tracks, those amazing tracks that nobody's ever gonna hear or will hear or have heard, they'll get them there. And kind of just ready to um, hopefully opening up the minds of the listeners to things that, that they never knew was out there pretty well. Oh well, there's, I think every DJ that's game enough to uh, DJ on the show is um, by default entering into a DJ challenge. Um, the, uh, although there's no set criteria of what you have to play, um, the only, there is one and that is that it'd be amazing. And so if anyone's playing on the show and they kind of stop playing amazing music, they kind of get kicked off pretty quickly. Um, but monthly, uh, there's something that we try to do amongst those that show up regularly and they like the idea of making their own music or trying to make their own music. And that is to essentially give them some homework to um, take away for a month and they have to come back the following month with their homework complete. And uh, it all stems from um, a theme the theme is chosen randomly, or those that are participating, they have to put their little theme in a, in a little, uh, <laughs> on a piece of paper and put on a hat. The paper gets drawn out, and the last one there, that's the theme that everybody has to um, produce a piece of music to. And then everyone goes away, and they cry, and um, they stress out, and then they show up and they've got a brand new track. Well, often uh, I get the feeling of, I was right. 
it is the best track in the whole world. But, um, <laughs> but uh, it does, that's not always the case. Uh, the, first, the first thing, the first emotion is, yes, it's done. And then um, and there's an element of pride that, you know, it's actually left um, the house and it's now playing, playing to the nation of the Cook Islands or at least Rarotonga, which is pretty cool. Kind of like, you know, your track being played to the nation of America, but it's the Cook Islands, a bit smaller. And that's quite a cool buzz. And then after that, the emotion is, uh, comes after like, you kind of critique it with um, uh, the songs that have been played before and after. And uh, with that kind of close critique, you either love it or you hate it. Sometimes it's like, uh, I should have done this better or I should have made that louder. And sometimes it's, I should never have done anything. I should have just stayed in bed. But that's the breaks. The thing is you have to produce it. You have to make things and uh, try them out for them to be able to see if they're actually going to work or not. And um, if you don't do that, then you're not creating, are you? Well, for me, listening to uh, what my friends and peers in Rarotonga are producing, it's, um, it's amazing. It's kind of like watching a little kid uh, go off to school and come back on the first day. It's sort of, I mean, I'm not going to get teary, but um, it's so good to see work being done and a lot of it's really good. And over the course of time, if everybody does their homework every month, everybody, for one thing, ends up with a body of work that they can call them their own. And also their skills at what they think they want to be good at, you know, they get nervous to be better. I think the first time we did it, the theme was WWF for, uh, what was it? World Wrestling Federation, and tracks were being made. This would have been maybe a year and a half ago. And now, the latest um, input from the producers, I can't even remember what it was called, but um, the, uh, the tracks and the quality of the sounds and uh, the arrangements and everything is just so, so much better. And um, that's a cool thing. Well, my niche in music is really anything that I can play with two fingers. <laughs> but um, having said that, uh, you can do a lot with two fingers. I wouldn't say I really have a niche, although I'm like, I love house, I love techno, and I love electro. And, but I also love drum and bass and dub and reggae, and I mean, it's not really a specific style. If anything, it may be a, uh, um, a tone or a colour. I would not say the music I make is like pop music. There's not many kids running around singing my songs and, uh, you know, dancing. But um, it's more a kind of a... Uh, the the colour is probably a little darker. And, um, yeah, that's just... That's just kind of the hole I fall into when I end up uh, making music by myself or DJing by myself for too long. It ends up being quite um, sort of broody and uh, quite tense. And I guess a lot of my tracks are like that. And uh, although now that I've said it, I'm going to try and not do that. <laughs> I've just always been totally into music. Um, even when I was a kid, the parents, uh, you know, the, everyone's got a family stereo, and uh, my mum and dad put the family stereo into my room because I was actually the only person that knew how to work it. And so, and it would come out when they had guests, and then it would go back into my room. And I ended up building a massive record collection of um, a lot of blues, acoustic blues, Booker White, John Lee Hooker, Lightning Hopkins, Elmore James, and uh, all the way through. And then growing up when I was, 
There's like lots of punk and new waves, so Wire and Gang of Four and UK Subs and Stranglers and da 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 da. And that was pretty well my first record collection. And it was massive. And then um, I sold it. And a little longer, a little while down the track, I ended up working at uh, the college radio station in Auckland, uh, BFM. And it reignited my love of music. And I started buying records all over again, lots and lots, and, but kind of like informed by what they were playing on BFM at the time. And that's where I kind of met um, probably my, well, my closest brothers in arms, Joost Langeveld. Uh, he was a bass player and uh, he was a DJ on BFM as well. And he said, we should get together and make some music. And I said, yeah, we should. And from there, everything else kind of unfolded. And uh, it was a great experience. And, um, you know, there's, when you're single, you have a lot of free time. And um, you can spend that time sitting around watching TV or drinking beer or sitting around watching TV, drinking beer and making music. And at the end of it, you might actually have a track. And who knows, it might actually be quite good. So um, that's what we used to do. This TV, more beer. And uh, we ended up making tracks together and making a little band and doing little tours and putting out some records and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think there's music being made. I'm not sure if you'd call it an industry. Um, it's a lot of kind of um, uh, incohesive elements creating music on their own. And, uh, but there's, there never really seems to be a, a funnel to put it all through. So like, everyone makes music and then it goes into this funnel. And at some point, it comes out of the funnel and it's like, oh wow, it's, it's over in the States or people are dancing to it in Germany. And, I think it kind of lacks that kind of structure. Um, I think that the grassroots end, the, the creators, um, the, the talent's definitely here, but it's sort of like um, being able to, um, uh, uh, to, to, for the talent to be able to manifest itself in somewhere other than the Cook Islands is kind of, well, I don't think it exists. That's, that's my feeling. Um, there might be a few that have like, maybe toured to Tahiti, but that's not really, that's, it's a little bit inconsequential, you know what I mean? It would be, I mean, Justin Bieber came from Canada. Canada, okay? Why couldn't the next Justin Bieber come from Arurangi? You know, the, are you saying that nobody's got voices like that or Maybe they haven't been found, maybe they haven't been nurtured, and it's like, it's those little steps that I think to a degree everyone realises, I've got a talent, I've got a voice, or I can write something, or I can play something. And it's sort of, but it never really gets past um, a lot of people's bedrooms. And, um, and it's, maybe it's because, you know, culturally, um, Cook Islanders are extremely humble, so they, they don't want to do it, and, um, and that's probably a part of it. But also, I think if you had, uh, if there were enough people encouraging you to do it, at some point you acquiesce and you go out beyond the bedroom and you'll sing it or you'll play it at a club or at a bar, whatever, and then from there, um, um, you know, other people can, may pick it up or pick the talent up and move it into somewhere where it's plausible that they could possibly make a living out of it. But initially I think there would, sh there would have to be, um, I know the government has all these departments and obviously culture is one of them. Um, and they do a very good job at what they do. But there's other things to do in culture and um, Maybe if there were some additional personnel that were focusing on different aspects apart from, you know, um, 
to Maivanui and um, you know these massive island cultural events, somebody that's a little bit more, uh, that can sort of drill down more into the talent of um, maybe those performing or those not performing in those realms of like Tamaivanui and dance, dance practice and drumming. If there was a little department, essentially like a cultural artist and repertory person that goes around and um, encourages people and maybe helps fund people. Um, it could be through, uh, you know, maybe someone's very good at singing, but and uh, their friend is very good at writing music, but they don't have the tools. You know, maybe, um, maybe something like a small computer that they could, you know, do their recording at home, or you know, you, they, there's this, they've got five uh, recording computers and goes to this household for a week and they record their demos and blah blah and then the music comes back and you know from there it gets assessed and going well this one's talented this one's not um, let's move on to the next next part and uh, we'll, we've got these guitarists here in Rarotonga we've got these great drummers in Rarotonga and some great writers why don't we see if we can see if we can mix and match the personnel to see if there's anything that actually you know uh, that actually works for this vocalist or for this writer. From there, it gets recorded again, and then, you know, it start, you, that, that talent starts moving through the funnel to a thing that's like essentially a product, and it goes, and you can say, well, this is from Rarotonga, but all that aside, it's actually really, really good, and, and it will stand up to this track or this environment or, you know, People of the South Pacific nations will love this song because it's about us and it's tied in with what we're all going through. Maybe it's coronavirus, maybe it's fishing, who knows? But there's no, that from there to there, that little part, that part in between, there's just nothing there. And uh, so, it, I mean, currently the item relies on everybody's you have to rely on your own resources to be able to get things done, which is, I guess that's well of a lot of places, but um, it's a small country. You should be able to do it, you know. The thing is, the pressure from parents to, uh, on their children to get things done, it actually never, ever really works. Um, and, uh, I mean, as kids, we've all been like encouraged to like, yeah, be a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist or, or whatever. And uh, you know, you live in the person's house, your parents' house, so it's always, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, of course. But really, if they just said, um, you know, I can see you're great at drawing or, you know, that's a really beautiful poem, you should try to turn that into a song and encourage your ch the, the children like that, then they'll probably be more productive and I think uh, they'll be happier. And that's, that's kind of one, what you want for your kids. It's not always based on money or financial gain. It's, it's about um, you know, a personal and emotional achievement. Don't do it. You'll never get paid. You'll never make money. Yeah. <laughs> you'll always be poor. Um, well, I, but really the way to encourage them is to encourage, to encourage them to do what they want and um, to encourage them to do the things that they enjoy because they'll get good at it and they will be good at it. And uh, I mean, it's not all about builders and plumbers and electricians. Don't get me wrong, I love builders, plumbers and electricians, but at some point, you know, um, there has to be um, other aspects of, you know, a society that um, that uh, that informs society. You can't have like, you know, a nation of builders. Um, they're always going to have a song that they sing, or they're listening to something, or a book they're reading, and that um, and that's dependent on what's created within that society. And there's, if there's no one doing it, then 
it's sort of, well, it'd be like living in Hamilton, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> not